Okay, so we're going to look at the magic wand today. Let's take our magic wand tool right here. First, we're going to check out the options, right? We've got a couple different things we can do with this. We're going to stick with our kind of basic magic wand here. This works in a similar way. We can look at that later. I think it's easier to understand this one first. We've got our same new selection, add to selection and subtract. And this tolerance thing here is pretty important as are these buttons here. Sample layers contiguous. We'll check those out in a second. Okay, so let's first look at the way this works. I'm going to set my tolerance to well, like 15. It's kind of low uh, for what we typically want to do. And I'm just going to click in here and we'll see what it does. It's selecting a bunch of colors that are the same, right? If we look at this, it's selected all these kind of gray. And the nice thing is that it's not just one specific pixel color, right? Like one exact precise hue. You can see it's skipping through different pixels, even though the color is changing. And, but yet it stopped here, right? The computer has decided that these pixels here are too dark or too different from the one that I clicked on and it stops. So what determines where it stops is what we selected here with this tolerance slider. All right, if I make this a higher value, let's try this again. I'm gonna deselect this. I'll make this much higher just to see what happens. I'm gonna click in a similar spot and you're gonna see it's selected all of this stuff. The only things it hasn't selected really are all these dark black areas in here, right? That's way too much. First one was way too little. I'm going to deselect that again. Usually a good starting place is around 30 or so. Um, the other thing that I want to notice when we clicked here, it's selecting everything. This area is way over here. What if I just wanted it to stop at these ones and not include this? Um, and that's this button down here, contiguous. If we have it checked off, it's going to only select contiguous pixels, which means pixels that are kind of adjacent or next to each other, attached together. Okay, the easiest way to show is just to do it. You'll notice I click pretty much the same spot. Okay, everything that it's selected is connected to itself. It stops here. It's not getting the same colors up here, right? Only nothing over here, only where it, where it's touching and, and it can kind of find its way through. Okay, let's do this smaller scale like this. Okay, and what we want to do is add to our selection here, right? Let's say we add this one and this. This is the, with the contiguous pixels, right? We want to add in this and this and this. So this is one way we can make a selection. This is we want our tolerance to be higher. This is not uh, high enough really, right? Let's select our sky here and select. You can see that this is doing a pretty good job of going around the edge of this dragon. And that's saving us a lot of work with our lasso tool, right? Trying to draw around that thing. I want to add in this and this. Oops, we got a little bit crazy there. Okay, I'm going to edit this. Now, when I start getting down here, again, I could increase my tolerance, but it's also creating issues like this, where it's kind of hard to figure out. Is this selected or is this not selected in here? Um, and that's a little bit problematic. I'm going to undo that last one or two, three, four. There we go. Really what I want to use this for, we're trying to select this dragon. And this is all the hard part of this, right? We've gone around the edge of this dragon. And now we're going to take our lasso tool to finish the job here, kind of, so to speak. So we choose our lasso tool. And I'm going to add in to this selection. If you've noticed, I've been selecting the background, right? We've got the sky selected. I'm going to come in here like this and circle this part. 
Okay, so this is, and now I don't need to be super precise with this. I'm just going to select everything here. And there's a little spot there. Okay, sorry for the dual zooming here. All right, so now I'm going to copy and paste what I've got selected. Turn off my other layer and you'll notice this. Okay, so we had this nice clean selection of the dragon, except remember we were using the magic wand to select the sky. Okay, because the sky and these mountains are all similar colors, so it's easy to use the magic wand to select these areas. Uh, except if we actually want the dragon, what do we do there? We've got a trick here because it's often much easier to select the background than it is to select the object because the object has lots of different color changes and subtle variations in it and details. The background is often blurry or a solid color. Okay, so what we do, select the background and then we're going to go select the inverse, which just means the opposite, right? And if you'll notice right now, you can see this little dotted line around the edge of our document. That's how we can tell that we've got this guy, the background selected, okay? Uh, kind of like a donut maybe, right? We've got the donut part here and we want the Timbit hole in the middle, right? So we're gonna inverse it, boom. And now that line is, disappears from the outside and we've just got the dragon and now we can copy and paste him instead and we've got this. Okay, so while we've got our dragon, we've already got it selected. I'm going to paste it in here. And I'm going to move them up here. I'm noticing this looks a little bit shaky here. And let's look back here real quick. Uh, this kind of looks like that too. That's okay. All right, I'm going to close this one. We don't need to save this. It won't save the selection anyway. Um, and we have our dragon already in, in this one, right? It's already right here. Okay. So this is the first part of the project that we already know how to do, hopefully, except we've done it a little bit of an easier way. Um, now we can see the parts that are standing out, right? The parts of the sky. The sky was like that beige color, and now it's blue. So we can easily see things that we don't want in here. And we can either use an eraser, again, with a kind of a soft edge here. Space bar, this one's really bad here. And we could also use the uh, lasso tool and draw around the edge, whatever you want to do. Let's save some of that other cleaning up here for now. Okay, what I think we want to do, let's go over here to this sketchy wing area here and clean this up a little bit to make it look nice. Um, let's make this smaller here. Okay, ultimately it needs to look good. So if you're not sure if you should keep part of it or erase it, you're gonna kind of leave it up to your discretion and what you think is gonna make it look better. I think that looks better than it did before. Uh, I'm gonna erase this, clean this edge up. We want to hide the fact that we've photoshopped this thing, right? We don't want people to think that we've cut it out of a different background. We want it to look like it's believably sitting uh, on the side of the highway here in this field on this little board. Okay. So the next part, to make it look like it's sitting on here, right? Imagine yourself sitting up here. You got one foot on this side, the other foot hanging on the other side, especially if you're a real big giant dragon. Okay, so one wing is going to be sticking, protruding out towards us. The other wing is going to be going the opposite direction. So I think we're going to see this corner in between here, sticking out like this. All right, so once we've decided on a good spot for our dragon, we still have some cleaning up around the edges to do, but let's leave it for now. Okay, also at this point we would, if we wanted to resize it or anything like that, bigger or smaller, we do that. I think I'm going to kind of put them like this. And let's change the opacity here. We're going to go up and drop the opacity down. I want to be able to see 
We really could turn them off, I guess. But uh, I think it'll be a little easier like this. And for this, I'm going to use the lasso, but I'm going to go down and choose this polygon tool here because it's going to allow me to select in quick straight lines here, right? The edge of this sign is pretty straight. I'm going to click here. I'm going to click down here. And I'm going to get... I gotta come through here because part of the wing is down here too, right? So I gotta make sure I get this part down here. This doesn't matter exactly how I select it. Um, I think this is gonna come down like this. And then to do this part in here, I'm gonna use the lasso tool again. So I'm gonna come up like this to get this and back to the starting point there. So now I'm gonna switch to my lasso tool the L button, or you can go down there and pick it out here. I want to add this part into my selection. I'm going to circle that. This is going to come down here. It looks like, let's just adjust our opacity again here. Yeah, I think this is kind of like a spike in its wing here or something right here, right? So let's add this in. Oops, wrong one, subtract that. Okay, and let's try that. Okay, so let's put this back up. And what we want to do is take our background. So we have to select our background layer. We're going to copy and paste this onto a new layer. So we've got this, right? And right now it's behind our dragon. I'm just going to drag this layer down so that it's in front of our dragon. And if it's in the same spot, this should create uh, this illusion pretty nicely. Okay. Um, so this is sort of part one for this. I'm going to stop this video here.